it's not possible to talk about this exhibition or this program without uh, thinking about the, the beginning, uh, how, how it all started, uh, because somehow, and, and maybe now this uh, a new way of doing business, uh, the context changes very, very quick and it passes from 8 to 80 all of a sudden. And, and I think this is also a test a little bit to our capacity to, to change and to adapt without losing content, but, but, but gaining content and, and somehow uh, finding meaningful uh, moments and, and purpose in the work and the research we do. And so maybe this is a, a good uh, way to start. The idea um, is that we are going to try to introduce to you, like the kickoff of, of this program, we're going to talk to you a little bit about, about it, how, how did, how did it, it start, and, and, and we'll just happily talk uh, all together like we've been doing on the last year, uh, eight months somehow. And like I was saying, I think it's a, a very, it's very interesting to start by the beginning. And, and because when we started, uh, something happened, the context in which we were supposed to work uh, also changed. The rules of the game changed. And, 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 and for us, this was very interesting because it was, uh, it was a kind of a matter to work on and, and also to use it uh, to, 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 to arrive to something. And, and in this case, by doing nothing, Teresa, can you, <laughs> Share with me some, some ideas about this start. Um, so yeah, I think, you know, all of us found ourselves in a situation as all three of us are also teaching, are also teaching in different um, laboratories at the EPFL, as well as, uh, as, well as being curators at Archizoom. And I think all of us, a lot of what we were discussing um, within our teaching, within our teaching house, let's say, um, was a lot to do with how do we do things with reduced means? Um, how can we still achieve things, um, transmit things, transport things, concepts, ideas, uh, projects, um, with very little available to ourselves? And I think as we started to discuss this topic, which essentially started off as a support for each other, mm -hmm. um, very soon evolved into an actual topic of discussion for um, a possible program that we could explore uh, within Archizoom, within the framework of Archizoom. Um, and this was nice because I think for us, we always saw this moment um, with so much uh, change and um, without ever really knowing uh, what will be happening, uh, what we are able to, to do and what not, um, it was nice to just ask this whole program some questions, mm -hmm. um, questions that we had been asking ourselves. Um, and. Yeah. So I think um, sometimes doing nothing leads to something. It's a, it's a kind of experiment. And uh, for us, it was really much in line uh, with the conditions that we are experimenting, experiencing at the moment, but also a way of challenging also our way of working, our way of doing. So instead of um, deciding uh, to work on a specific let's say specific, with a specific aim, with a specific topic, we started with a series of questions. And this idea of starting a project with a series of questions, it was a way for us to not really try to give answers to uh, what will the future condition be, but rather to stay in the moment. And stay in the moment, it was in a way, um, the idea of accepting uh, the condition, and this, is, this was something really important for us. So in a way, uh, sometimes doing nothing leads to something is also a mental challenge. And this is how we, it, it, it is not only a physical challenge, uh, a curatorial challenge, but also a mental challenge. Because um, it also uh, entails the acceptance of, uh, 
uh, all sorts of outcomes. So we started from a series of very practical questions, like can we stay open? Can we have something exhibited? How will the visitors uh, ex will experience the space? And what kind of moments or topics can we bring on the table that which are which can be relevant at the moment? But it's also, I was talking before about a mental challenge um, because for us, it means also to tackle something that can stay open, that can uh, be unresolved, that it, that can also be disorienting and disoriented because it lacks a prefigured uh, aim. And then uh, at a certain point, we also were questioning what does it mean to accept doing nothing? Are we doing too much? Are we, how, are we daring enough not to do um, anything and uh, in a way this this kind of uh, question that we uh, that were challenging our mindset uh, they were also um, in a way creating or they were produced by a form of resistance and it's a form of resistance resistance of course to all um, to all needs uh, about production, about uh, the constant need to respond to to a question with an answer, and we, in a way, we were trying also to to avoid that. Mm -hmm. There is one thing that you are talking about. There are two things that I want to bring up because somehow while while talking about while preparing this, um, they were meaningful moments in our discussions. One is the, the first uh, idea that there's nothing we can do. So there's nothing we can do, and this nothing is still there. So we need to do it from home, from wherever we are, remotely, and there is nothing we can do. This is the first moment where the word nothing starts to, to appear. And the second moment, while you were talking, the beyond the idea of the question, and we try not to be very abstract on this, is how to mm -hmm. effectively do something while doing nothing or while having the impression to be limited. This was one, one thing that I like to, to stress. The second thing was while Teresa was somehow talking and because Teresa, she, 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 she works more closely with the first year and was the idea of if we can do nothing or there's nothing one can do, how can we still uh, pass the idea of a physical thing? Mm -hmm. And this was, I don't know, this, the idea of the weight uh, of a brick, for example, uh, on my head was this idea of scale that we struggle all the time. And, um, and after, after accepting this idea of the nothing, um, came the second thing is how to produce something. And I think it was a very important moment where we took Francis Ally's uh, work, uh, piece, um, to, to, to guide us on this and to question it into, a, 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 to make it a, the major question sometimes or, or the assessment, sometimes doing nothing can lead to something. And, and it's also, and it's not funny, but I, I, oh no, when, when when someone asks you and you are doing your stuff and someone asks you, what are you doing? And this first question is nothing. What are you doing? Nothing. What are you reading? Nothing. But we have a double way of reading it. The first one is you write, you actually doing nothing, but or you are hi trying to, to hide a certain value of what you are doing. And I think this is an important thing. The question of the value and the question how to find that value guided by uh, suppose doing nothing. And, and I think this was something that helped us or guided us into the research mm -hmm. um, because then we, we started to discuss a lot of works um, mainly, mainly outside architecture where the doing nothing in commas or without the commas had a meaningful uh, purpose. And it was, I would say the doing nothing, it was the driving force of that creative act, if we, we may say. And I think we focus a little bit on this, Teresa. Yeah, I mean, I, th I think it was very much about taking the idea, uh, taking away the idea that we have to always be focused on, on making objects. I think this was something we all agreed on, on very quickly. And, you know, in respect to what you were saying about value is to put value on the act itself. Um, and in fact, you know, we discussed many times that 
um, the term doing nothing is already in, an, in its own way paradoxical. It's an oxymoron. It is quite virtually impossible to do nothing. Um, and I, I think, you know, that brought us to a lot of discussion of artists, um, as you were mentioning, um, in many different disciplines that uh, really tackled the subject. I don't know, Sylvia, maybe you would like to <laughs> yes. walk us through those. So we, of course, we were thinking about um, experiments in uh, conceptual, uh, so we were thinking about experiments in conceptual art. And this was maybe our first reference uh, works and videos um, such as those by Andy Warhol uh, eating a hamburger and filming himself doing that or sleeping. Uh, and, and for example, for us, even the, the act of sleeping and filming it, this idea of uh, joining together as a, an unconscious and conscious status by filming it, it was something quite uh, relevant for us. And uh, we were looking at a series of artists uh, such as uh, Chris Burden, but also uh, Roman Ziegner. Mm -hmm. And um, and they created a, a, a sort of uh, uh, yeah like a, a, an artistic reference and um, a line of uh, thought. But then, uh, for us, it was very um, much uh, also the 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 chance to understand the nature of the space we are into. So, what is a, an architecture? space, uh, an exhibition gallery into an architecture school. Uh, what kind of topics should it bring on the table? What, how can we discuss things differently? And for us, it was uh, our re response or our experimental idea was to open up to other disciplines. And uh, this idea of shifting the, the you know, the, the spotlight uh, from architecture to, to other disciplines, it was also a way to understand this kind of creative processes that uh, Tiago was mentioning before that can, um, that can be triggered by this non-action. So uh, we um, selected also a list of guests because, uh, of course, we have two uh, installations in the gallery space at the moment, um, which uh, we will uh, present more deeply um, in a moment. But we also thought about bringing a program online, of course. So we selected a list of guests which will elaborate on the subject. Um, and uh, we, we thought about this program, uh, to, we structured uh, the program in order to have really different disciplines and different uh, perspectives. So we are going to uh, have guests which um, uh, will tackle different disciplines from music uh, to visual art uh, to literary works to design and also experimental films. And um, the first guest we want to present, maybe because we're very proud of having him he, uh, here, it's uh, Brian Eno. And um, be why? Well, because for us, this nothingness uh, in music was uh, very much explored. Maybe it's it's the discipline who explored the idea of nothingness more uh, than any any other discipline. And then also because uh, Brian, you know, he, he um, understood music, not just as a product, product, but also as one piece of a, of a kind of soundscape. So this is how he also invented, for example, ambient music. Ambient music was invented as uh, a sound, not really music, but a sound to do nothing. And uh, he also has been uh, working um, extensively on uh, triggering this creative uh, process by ex exploring different forms of uh, creativity. Uh, and, I'm, and here I'm referring, for example, to his um, set of cards uh, called Oblique uh, Strategies. 
and uh, maybe some of you want to yeah, no. present because, the other Because dance. you're talking about mm -hmm. Eno, uh, there is of course the, the music for airports and we, while we were doing our research and thinking about why Brian Eno, why the music should be him, etc. There is of course this, we start to find links among the different guests that we have. Uh, while we were talking about Eno and his music for airports and we imagine ourselves in this transition space, which is an airport. And of course, this leads us also to some of the works, maybe one of the most known video works of, of Adrian Pachi, that will also be, be our guest. This, this beautiful video where you have the, the participants going up into this, this uh, stair uh, to lead to, a, to a, an airplane that is not there, these transitional spaces. Uh, and I imagine myself looking at the video and, and thinking about the music for airports and, and there's a huge tension between their faces when there are the close-ups of, of Pachi in their faces, the idea of the ceremonial thing. Uh, the act of walking, of course, it's also linked a little bit. And I remember um, we thought we thought a, a little bit about this. Uh, the oblique strategy that, that you are that you are talking about, we are then, of course, uh, more related to to curatorial work and theory. We'll have uh, Nicola Borio, um because we are a little bit interested in this in this idea of, of relational aesthetic and and this minimum intervention, of course, linked to 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 the work that he's been doing and he then. Uh, uh, for the Palais Tokyo, which we also have already in the architectural uh, project, this little intervention idea and, and how, how can the reduce means can be exponential in the in the result and what this forces us also to shift our our our, our image uh, about the, the scale of intervention doing little this this concentration I, I would say. And uh, Teresa, someone else that we, we are now convincing our audience to, to focus, to, to stay with us during all the program. Uh, can you tell us someone, someone else? Yeah, I mean, I, I think um, I, I will just run quickly through, through the rest of our guests um, so we can move on into, into the, the environment that we are currently immersed in. Um, I think, you know, we're very happy to um, have Adrian Pachi, who is in fact an artist who actively fights against the idea of nothing. Um, engaging in notions of memory, of stories, of relationships um, that they should be told to be remembered and not not forgotten and not to disappear. Um, we will ha we will have Adrian in in conversation with another young artist um, called Lek M Geloshi. Um, who really focuses on nothingness, which is really the core of, of his work. Um, we will also have Marcelin Cor Corby um, give two uh, talks. Uh, the first one will be focusing on the Beat Generation writers. Um, uh, um, on design, on design, <laughs> on design and do domesticity, um, focusing on, for example, the, the chaise longue, which is, of course, a piece of furniture that is designed exactly to do nothing. It's not quite for sleeping, not quite for sitting. Um, and of course, it evokes memories of childhood and, and daydreaming, which is, in fact, what we hope is one of the byproducts of doing nothing. Um, we will also have uh, Francois Bovier, who will um, take us into um, a history of um, the idea of nothingness translated into uh, materials and supports um, demonstrated in experimental films of the 50s and, and 60s. Um, and then finally, <laughs> Oh, yeah. Uh, finally, we are also very happy because uh, we have the chance, like you're saying, to work uh, in, in the campus and somehow to also to create new formats and trying to merge formats. And we'll have a new um, a new series coming up. It's uh, the 2020 series that will be run in parallel uh, with with our with our show, but that we somehow will try also to integrate into this reflection. The 2020 is a very is a very sh is a very simple series in which we will invite the guest professors. This year's guest professors, uh, first semester, and then on the second part of the year we'll have a second a second series of it. And we'll invite them to 
to, to first of all, to, to know their practice and then to engage a very uh, simple discussion or not uh, about uh, topics that put them together. So that's why 2020, just a recipe, 20 minutes, we'll have one guest, 20 minutes for the second guest, and then hopefully, and, and we, we believe that in the dialogue, the dialogue creates much, much, much value. We'll try to, to, to talk with them. So this in this series, it will run along. You'll find all the details uh, in the program um, online on Archism website and also then on, on the social media, we'll try a little bit to, to keep pace with it. And um, this, I think it's, it's the program. It's a very condensed and intense program that runs through uh, three weeks. Saying that, I think we should a little bit come to the core also of, of, the, of the installation that we were able to, to put together, we and of course a huge team behind, behind us uh, here on the main space of the gallery. And, and we'll have, um, the space is, is quite very simply designed, but it has uh, some works um, of, of, of Francis Alice in the piece, the centerpiece um, is, is a beautiful work that Teresa will now present in us, our, our special guest for, 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 for today, or, or Sylvia. Yeah, oh, okay. so yeah. of course, uh, sometimes doing nothing leads to something. It's, um, it's a wordplay on the title of Francis Salis' performance that he made in Mexico City in 1997, uh, which was called Sometimes Doing Nothing Leads to... No, Sometimes Making, making Something le Leads to Nothing. Um, and um, in a way, yeah. So he in this, yes. Yeah, so so in this video, he is um, uh, recording himself um, strolling around a huge block of ice through the cities of uh, through through the streets of Mexico City until it, it melts and until it becomes only a couple of drops and the kids are playing with them and of course uh, this um, the work the, I think the entire work of Francis Alice was really a reference for us and um, and this is because he really questions this this idea of action uh, this idea of the gesture, this idea of the making, which becomes in a way um, a work in itself. So the, 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 this emphasis on, on the action itself, it becomes so radical that um, at the end, the physical uh, object Disappear, literally disappears or it dissolutes into, into nothing. So we, we started to... Um, to get really inspired by his idea of the paradox of, of praxis and um, and the, the the way he stages his actions is is through uh, walking uh, through the streets through uh, moving objects to um, what to stage actions that can be both individual or or collective effort and um, and I think one one thing that to mention is also that. Uh, through the works of Francis Alice, we can also understand how this nothingness can can take on uh, a political meaning, um, which which can also uh, be be something that we we I think we can, it can also be very very relevant today, because in a way uh, through his various uh, performances, we can also understand how the the dynamics of uh, of production. Um, to and, and and the logics and and parody of effort, they 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 become something that has a, a very intense uh, political meaning, and um, it's it's also about uh, the way uh, he uh, starts uh, his actions. So he he constantly starts his action uh, not by looking for an answer again, but more uh, proposing a set of questions or a set of uh, aphorism that then need need to be tested uh, against the the action itself. Um, so maybe we can also introduce the other. Uh, installation that we have in our main piece. Our yeah, piece. Our, yeah. <laughs> our, our, our literally central piece in, in the space. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so this would, would be a good moment to introduce this piece that we're, we are sitting in front of. Um, it's an installation um, by Edouard Cabet. 
And uh, Edor is an architect whose research through his teaching and his own practice um, puts into constant question uh, what seems to be certain dichotomies, uh, such as analog and digital, um, intention and indeterminacy, um, qualitative and quantitative. Uh, his fashion, fascination with drawing and craft and his subsequent run-in with uh, computational design and digital technologies has led um, to a line of research um, being created at the Institute of Advanced Architecture in Catalonia called Machinic Protocols. Um, and it is from here that uh, much of the, the work that we now see has, has been kind of derived or developed. Um, and of course, this, this uh, investigates uh, the parallelism of, of the analogous and the animated, uh, uh, automated, sorry, <laughs> um, the instinctive reactive mind and the programmed algorithm. Um, this particular installation, which was specially commissioned for sometimes doing nothing leads to something, um, consists, as you can see here, uh, a five by five meter uh, horizontal planar surface, uh, 16 fans with 16 sensors, um, a 3D printed sand dispenser, which is suspended uh, over the installation, which will, and now I really have to check my notes, um, which will discharge 1000 kilograms of sand over the course of 20 days for a total of 160 hours. Um, the presence on, of the sand on certain uh, points of the plane where the sensors are will activate its corresponding fan. And of course, then start to push this material around, creating a completely unpredictable dune landscapes. Um, which are then repeated over and over again, e with each iteration presenting a certain kind of limit uh, from one to the other. And hence the title of, of the piece. And now you have to really excuse my friends. <laughs> Atlas de Zantini Potential. Um, so I'd like to invite Edouard <laughs> to sit with us. Um, I would really like to thank you. I think it has been, uh, um, I've got it, sorry, I've been holding it <laughs> um, in my lap. Um, I'd really like to thank you for, for this piece and um, agreeing to do it. It was not a huge amount of time that we gave you to respond mm. to, to our brief. Um, and maybe I'm, I'm just going to throw a, a question at you. Um, when we, when we first came to you with this commission, um, I think one of the questions I asked you was whether um, you could come up with a question to which this installation could answer to. And your response was, uh, can nothing design? So I was wondering whether you might want to elaborate on that for us. Sure. Um, well, first of all, it's it's a it's a real pleasure to be here. Uh, thanks to the to the three of you and and you know to Cyril, to Akizum, to APFL. I think it's a, it's it's really a chance. No, every every uh, every opportunity is a chance to 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 explore certain ideas. Um, I think I was immediately touched by the theme of the of the exhibition um, because the work that the work that I do relies on um, maybe very simple actions that might seem irrelevant or that might seem so minor or that might seem uh, don't have much consequence. For example, the one of blowing a little bit of sand um, once introduced within a kind of greater system uh, eventually starts to really create. Um, its own behavior, its own patterns, um, and and uh, and kind of emergent uh, results that you don't really um, think of or plan in the beginning. So um, maybe about this about this installation. Essentially, what it is is it's a fan with a sensor uh, that detects the um, the, um, the arrival of of sound. So whenever a little bit of sound comes in the proximity of the fan it just kind of pushes off. And that is a very 
a very simple uh, a very simple action which we can understand we can understand how it works so it, it's very it's very easy to grasp um, when there is one entity but the moment it's kind of uh, integrated within a field in this case there are 16 um, well the sand gets then pushed somewhere else and then accumulates on top or in the in the vicinity of another fan which then blows it himself so there starts to be a kind of chain which in this case is uh, kind of two-dimensional because these fans are placed in a in an xy coordinate system and little by little this installation starts to make a drawing in a way out of nothing because there is just this kind of very fine uh, falling of sand, which seems so 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 minor, but little by little starts to create a, a kind of large drawing. That was that was actually a very lovely moment of slight intrepidation earlier when we started. We released the nozzle, and the stream of sand came down. And I think I, I didn't look at the time, but it seemed to take a moment. Um, of just watching the sand fall. And actually, after this initial expectation of wanting or willing something to happen, it actually became so wonderful just to see the sand fall. You know, I, I found this um, a very beautiful moment. And then suddenly we were interrupted by this quite brutal <laughs> action action of the of the fans, which by the way, for the audience, we've had to turn off, otherwise you would not hear us. Um, we will turn it back. We will turn it back on. Um, but maybe I want to elaborate a little bit on on the notion of drawing that you mentioned, um, because um, I know that you are quite a prolific drawer. <laughs> um, I know that uh, it's been a practice that you have been falling in and out of over years, and then and then really pushing again a lot. Um, and maybe to be really precise, I wanted to bring it back to the notion of the line, because I know you and I have had many conversations on about lines, the importance of lines, um, and about how, you know, the, the action of drawing a line itself really places a very strong demarcation on a page. Um, so whilst I can understand that this particular installation here poses us with a spirit or an attitude of drawing, the action of it is quite different to, mm -hmm. to this notion of taking a pencil and, and making a mark on a paper. Mm -hmm. um, yes, I think, I think it is eventually, it's a machine, no? It, it, has a, it has an algorithm, it has motors, it has sensors, um, and, and, and all of that eventually serves in order to make a, to make a drawing. Um, and, and, and as you say, you know, we've had many conversations and, and I've been drawing for, for a long time, uh, at least since, uh, since before joining architecture school, at least. Um, but often, I, I've often felt a frustration in drawing, uh, which is the frustration of, 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 um, of finding it difficult to surprise myself with the outcome of a drawing. No? And uh, often I start a drawing and, and, and then um, I can already imagine the outcome. And, and, and that frustrates me because I think it's, it's um, drawing of course is a tool to discover, it's a tool to invent. Um, and in this case, I think the, 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 um, the game is to, um, is to outsource to partially outsource the drawing uh, process, no? So um, I'm still drawing in the sense that I have the idea of this installation, I have the idea of moving sand with a fan. Um, it could be sand, it could also be ink, no? It could be on, on, a, on, a, on, on this wooden base, it could also be on a, uh, on a paper canvas. Um, so I have, a, I have at the beginning, a kind of intuition of the drawing that is going to emerge out of this. But it's been a month that, uh, that with my team, we've been working on this installation. And it's been a month that we are speculating, we are trying to imagine the drawing that is going to come out. And, and now that is happening after, you know, after all the wiring, after the installation, after all the testing, finally, we are discovering something that, that is emergent that we didn't understand. So now certain patterns are appearing, certain events are appearing, and we needed to, 
to um, to set it to work to be able to to understand it. So, you know the the. Sometimes I like to think the drawing process as, as a kind of thought that you have in your head and then it transits through, through your body all the way to your hand, all the way to your pen, and then it expresses something on a page. And then maybe the technique that you use, whether it's a pencil, whether it's a paintbrush, does give a little bit of surprise or, or a little bit of unexpectedness. In this case, it's similar, except that the, the, the pen is somehow kind of very far away. No, There is not a direct connection or there is not a physical connection. But eventually, I think I consider that this, this installation, in a way, it is um, kind of the hand of the drawing that is executing the order that has come from a, from a desire in the, in the head. And I think that this is something that is kind of symptomatic to, in a way, to technology, to automation, to robots, because eventually they do things that we ask them to do. Um, but there might be a certain element of freedom or unexpectedness in, in that. And I think this is precisely what this, in, what this installation search, no? is where can this, how can we keep a certain level of control, but where can, can this setup take us where we wouldn't have been able to go ourselves alone or with our kind of, with, with, with the mere um, uh, tools that we have ourselves. Can I ask you a question? I, I was wondering, I was listening to you, and uh, at the same time, I was thinking about something I think it was Moneo uh, that wrote or said about drawing that is your, the thought that was not yet thought. So as, as the, the hand goes further, much more faster than, than your thought, and it will show you what you should be thinking of, kind of like this. And I was listening to you, and I, I understand there's, I don't know, tell me if it's true or not, that there's a certain shift towards the design of the process, which will be invisible because the process here, all the concept conception of that process, the rules, like you said, the rules of the game, you set the rules of the game, but then there is, how do you deal? Because in the end, there's also a result, no? There's a, how do you deal with the unexpected? Do you design the process or you also have kind of an eye to design the unexpected. It's kind of a contradiction because the unexpected. I'll, I'll do these two things play a game because which one has a, a bigger influence on you when you are thinking about your installations? Thank you. The, the answer is intuition because, um, because it's as simple as this installation is or, or seems to be from the outside, it's, it's, uh, it's impossible to calculate and it's impossible to fully predict. Um, but you make up your own intuition. You make up your own guess of more or less what's going to happen. And of course, it always ends up being different, um, but maybe not very different. No? And I think it's, it's that difference that, that, of course, I'm seeking or I'm, uh, or I'm searching for. But um, it's, I don't know, in, you know if, you, if you kind of put it back within the architecture con context, um, when you work in a team and you design, you don't design on your own. No, you design with uh, you design with other people, and and uh, and there is a kind of general direction that the project might take. But the 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 sum of the individualities in the project is gonna is gonna kind of create or produce their fair share of um, of quality that is gonna come from within them. So eventually, a, a collaboration I think is all about welcoming. Um, uh, the creativity of each of the members of the team or the freedom that you leave to each of the members of the team. And I think here the game is no different. It's no different. It's, it's, about, it's about welcoming the, the, the complexity that this is inventing that I'm not able myself to, uh, to calculate, to simulate, to anticipate, to, to, to fully predict. But maybe just just a reaction to that because I I I'm all up for intuition and I do believe that there's a degree of it, but I also believe that it is very trained. <laughs> it's very trained. In fact, I think you know uh, I I kind of understand it because I think if I observe your body of work, for example, it it has gone through many iterations and it has gone through a lot of experimentation. Um, yeah, I think iterations is is really the key word here. And I think with each time, I have seen each installation develop because of the knowledge of the last. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. And and I think this is this is also somehow important that it's it's something not to be passive, again, this kind of passive um, understanding of intuition, we all have it, yes, we all do. But the question is of how to how to build up on that. And, yeah. and yeah, I think, I think for me, this is somehow very strong in, in your body of work. And, you know, also in your mentioning of protocols, you know, like, I, I always was so fascinated being a complete technophobe myself. Um, not phobe. I'm not scared of technology. I'm just really somewhere in the dark ages, I think, sometimes. Um, <laughs> um, but I, I think that uh, what I was really surprised about when, when you first started telling me about what you do was how accessible it was. Mm. Um, and actually, when you take apart what these machines do, it's so simple. It's so you know, a child would be able to understand that, you know, and yeah. I mean, I recently, my own six year old daughter has asked me whether she can go to like coding classes. So, I'm, um, but I, I think that's a very nice thing about that is to that, I don't know, I should let you talk about it, this whole notion of demystifying uh -huh. technology, you know, I think it's, I think that is a really powerful yeah. Yeah. Um, direction yeah. to go through. I think I, when you say that, uh, I, I'm also sometimes really struggling with uh, with with the use of technology. I mean, it it gets so quickly, so complex, and then uh, and then there's also something that it it seems to be always much easier to learn for the younger generation. <laughs> no, so it's like a, it's like a lot of effort to keep up, to keep up, to keep up. Um, so the the, the the work that uh, that I do responds to that, and it it uses somehow I think the most successful piece of work are the ones that are the most simple. Mm -hmm. So they're they are simple and, and I like to um, always emphasize on the kind of didactic uh, or communicative um, character that they have, that when someone looks at one of these installations or interventions, he or she can immediately understand what is going on. No, And it's, it's, uh, it, it, somehow all of the, most of the wiring is apparent. Um, the sensors here are very small, but but they are still they are still present. So when someone when someone looks at this uh, at this installation, I think there's a possibility of of tracing and 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 understanding really how it how it works. Although it's 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 on one hand very simple, and on the on the other hand quite complex because of course I mean it's it's. It's uh, it's electronics, it's coding, uh, it's a kind of physical computing parts. It, these fans, they are they are they are not easy to make and to build. But this these are all things that somehow in your head you can uh, you can foresee or you can you can imagine. And then, um, uh, yeah, I think I think the, the, the maybe one of the things that is constant uh, through the work is this idea of very simple actions that get repeated uh, or that get actually inserted within a much larger um, field, let's say, um, and then that will use something more complex. But, but, but they need, it's a kind of in between simplicity and, uh, and complexity with the idea that everything needs to be visible and, and understandable. Mm. That's like reflecting something you said, the sum is greater than its parts. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. A very good motto to to end <laughs> to end the root idea is that of course we can uh, fly fly over <laughs> uh, fly over the, the installation. Um, I will just uh, thank you, Edward, for for coming, for joining, for all this special commission piece. You and Peter, Peter Magnus, yes. uh, that's also by your side. Um, very, we are very grateful uh, to having this. We we hope that that people uh, within the limits of, of the current situation can also visit the piece. I think the amazing thing, uh, every time we're going to visit, it will be slightly different, which is quite amazing. Maybe we have kind of nice hours to visit in the beginning of the day, in the end of the day, to be shifting. As 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 also this this idea that in the in the gallery we tried a little bit not to have very static pieces, but more um, kind of a certain dynamic uh, that that 
that, that invites uh, visitors to, to engage during a certain period of time and to observe the, the shifting narratives that will happen on each one of the videos and mainly on, the, on, this, on this piece. And I don't know if you have nothing more to add. I will just maybe pass the list of, of our, our thanks, the persons we need to thank about all, all the work that has been done. And so I'll quickly read them to you. Um, we would like to, of course, uh, thank the following people uh, that are not here with us, but kind of working in the background, uh, whose, whose kind and generous support and dedication of time allows us to, to realize this first project at, at Archism. And first of all, of course, I'd like to thank Cyril, Cyril Veillon, the director of, of Archism, for, for mainly trusting Thank you, Cyril, for trusting in the team and being there for us uh, all the time. And uh, also in the Archism team, uh, Clemence Louis uh, for overseeing the scenography, uh, Atelier Diakov working with us for everything that is graphic design, Elena Chiavi, uh, who, is, who is driving all the communications now, Beatrice Raval for keeping everything in check, of course. Thank you very much. And then uh, La Porsche uh, outside helping La Porsche design. Uh, uh, Antoine G Gagliardi, sorry, sorry, I know, Gagliardi, <laughs> so, uh, of the Atelier Maquette, also helping with us, Patrick Chouard, system specialist at Art Lab and all the student assistants that also with us setting this, this, this installation, and also to Peter Kirch Kirchman, uh, Elizabeth Calzado Michel and Studio Francis Alice for sharing their generous support of the project. And of course, like I'm repeating, but you also deserve it. Uh, thank you for being with us, Edouard, and also Peter for this special commission, commission piece. Um, I don't know, as, as a by closing word, I'd like to thank everyone that was with us uh, on, on Zoom, on the, this huge living room that is Zoom. <laughs> And that will be, of course, will be of course our meeting point for 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 the next events. Stay tuned. Check check the program, which is really ambitious. I, I'm I'm kind of suspicious for saying this, but it's really a very <laughs> ambitious and 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 great program. So so I hope that somehow uh, we can give some sense, and some to, some purpose of of this this proposal of doing nothing. <laughs> it's okay. Thank you very yeah. Much. <laughs> But we, we, we end up by uh, switching on, you know, okay. uh, yeah, of course. Yeah, the, exactly. the atlas of the atlas. <laughs> yes. Thank you very much to the four of you, Teresa, Tiago, Silvia, and Edouard, which have to pour the sand. That's it. Okay, you understand why we had to switch it off during the talk? So the, the sand will accumulate during uh, the whole exhibition time. Huh? Yes, this is uh, in this uh, sablier. There is uh, enough sand for one day. Correct. And every day there is a new load of, sa of uh, sand that will be distributed randomly on the platform. Exactly. So little by little, dune will appear as a kind of paysage or landscape yeah. will be constructed. Huh? It's yes. A way and it's, it's It's construct, constructed through the light that is blocking, blocked by the sun. Correct. So in the proximity of every fan, there is a sensor. And when the sun um, covers the sensor, then the fan starts to work and pushes it away a little bit further. Yeah, so, so little by little, the sun will go towards the outside yeah. of the installation. And right now, the image we have now, it's half an hour about. Yes, fan. exactly. So, an hour. so it will run for 20 days. Mm -hmm. um, now there is about 10 kilos. At the end, we will have a thousand. Wow. Um, yeah, and 
And we don't really know what this landscape is going to look like. Mm -hmm. We don't know if it's going to cover the end of the base. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so it's going to be a surprise. But I think you can kind of make your idea, your your in your imagination. Yeah, we can expect something. You can, ex yeah, you can make your own uh, your own story, and then maybe it becomes like that, or maybe it becomes something different. Okay, we can say goodbye, Edouard. We will uh, say goodbye. That's always difficult <laughs> to cut a Zoom meeting. But thank you very much. And uh, please welcome if you want to see it for real. And see you for the next talk. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.